YouTube, welcome to part two of the Max C Band Tournament. This is top eight, grand finale, plus the top deck list. None of this will be affecting the tier list whatsoever. This is just a fun thing that we want to be doing every couple months, maybe. Let me know if this makes the game better, more enjoyable, more interactive, more diverse, and Konami could be paying attention, and maybe they could consider just banning the card themselves so you tell me if you support this and like this maybe konami will see that also and by watching as long as you can that greatly supports liking commenting subscribing all that good stuff and with that out of the way hajime there can only be one winner and you're looking at it let's go i keep on saying that evenly matched is really good against snake eyes if they don't summon a boar load and or a baron to floor On the website, it is the Ash Combo 2.1. It is the one card Ash that will counter cards like Nibiru. Nibiru is not gonna be a good use against this play as you're equipping the Oak into the back row using the Ash to send the Oak and then use the Poplar to equip the Flame Burge. Very good, very nicely done. We have Apollo three map, the Flame Burge in the field, Temple plus the IP, but this hard loses to evenly matched where we don't have a boar load or, an Apo or the Baron to Florida negate. And with evenly match becoming more popular because of transaction rollback in Labyrinth, maybe this is not as safe as we think it is just because it counters Nibiru. To battle we go at the end of the battle phase, banishing everything but one, leaving up the triple monster negate Apollo. See, even if we get evenly matched, the Apollo is still pretty damn good. Now, Apollo can negate Gamma, right? Not within the same chain. So the Apollo will not only be negated and destroyed, but it also will not negate the first effect it was negating. And, uh, you know, that's part of ne negating its effect to negate, right? But even if you were to chain destroy it, it has to reduce to negate. So a chain offering to the doomed, destroying it in response to it trying to negate, that would also be another way to stop it from negating or let's say a chain banishment effect. Now it can't actually even be destroyed because the Mascarina. Mascarina protects it from destruction, but the negate still happened. So there we go. So Offerings of Doom would actually not work because of Mascarina, but if it weren't for Mascarina, it would stop the negate. So now you know how that works. The Omega is going to, I mean, she's still on the field. I can't believe how good the Mascarina protecting this from the Gamma destroying it. Now we got more negates. What the hell is going on? Is this not a one, it's a hard once per turn? Could we have just uh, battled over it? Oh, we were in main phase two because it evenly matched. So we could not have battled over it. And we could still use the effect to banish a card from the opponent's hand during the opponent's turn. Quick effect during the main phase, banish a card from the hand and itself. We're gonna do that right now as the subversion is attempting to push it into the back row as the Apollo say negates the banishment of a card from the hand. Now, ooh, this is getting spicy. We have accomplished that we understand that Apollo has to reduce its attack on resolution, right? Well, while it's indestructible from card effect, it's gonna be sent to the graveyard through Daruma. So Daruma is gonna make it so it does not negate. It's gonna send to the graveyard, no negate after flipping the field face down. Daruma, Daruma. Flip down, flip down, send to the grave, no negate. Frame Lord Omega is going to still not be able to banish. Let's read this. It says banish both this face up card from the field and one random card from your opponent's hand. Since it says both face up, it's not face up. So it actually turned off its own effect. It did not get negated by Apollo. It essentially got negated, well, you know, resolved that effect because it couldn't properly resolve the effect due to Daruma. But we still dealt with the Apollo. Triple M, but then we, you know, we, uh, was this even a good idea? We then uh, didn't even think about the Triple Tactics Talent, which is quite the popular card here, especially with Maxi being banned. So I'm thinking overall, this was just a mistake. And it forced us to use the Daruma Cannon early. Uh, yeah, I didn't like that at all. Not one bit. Add the Diablo Star with the Wanted. Discard the original Sinful to summon our Diablo Star. Diablo Star set up into the back row. Another card similar to Cyframe Lord Omega is DPE. DPE says that it has to pop a card you control and another card. So if DPE were to be the only card in the field and you were to chain 
a ghost ogre to it to pop it in response to it activating, it then wouldn't pop another card in the field, just so you understand how cards like that works. We have the Welcome Labyrinth being negated by the Ash, the biggest counter to Labyrinth being that interaction. Save your Ash for the big Welcome. What if they summon an Ariana? Do not use Ash on Ariana. You could use Impermanence, you could use Valor, but not Ash. We have Chandelier being triggered. We have Garura being triggered. To draw a card here, Chandelier attempting to be added back to the hand will be negated as the the G -G 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 Garura draws one card here. So I think we're gonna have a good next turn follow up. Speaking of Ariana, we now have her in our hand. Now the Wanted could draw a card if we had a Wanted in the grave, but we do not, unfortunately. Another Daruma. Multiple Daruma in this deck. Is Daruma the way with double Daruma? I'm thinking we play Trap Tricks, maybe. On the attack, reduce to zero. Link Karibo, send the Poplar, activate the Poplar, equip a card into the back row here. We have a regular welcome. Okay, not a big welcome. We have one big welcome in the graveyard with the effect to return our Ariana back to the hand unless we have a level eight or higher fiend on the field to then use the effect to spin a card in the field back to the hand. Looks like we're gonna use that effect right here, right now. By summoning a lady, we could use the big welcome to spin back that Jet Synchron back to the hand, triggering Ariana to draw a card, set that card, and we still have that activatable Daruma to flip the whole field face down. Very well done from both players here. Let's hop into game two. Diablo Star is here. Can we play under the Nibiru? We're on summon number one. Special summon our Ash. We could just go for the anti Nibiru line here. Poplar come forth in special summon. We have the Snake Eye field spell. This would equip the Oak from the hand. Come forth and summon from the deck. We have the Flame Burge. We're about to go into summon number five. Now, summon five is here. Triggering the Flame Burst, triggering the Poplar. This is Summon 5. And if we equip the Flame Burst, summon the Oak, summon the Poplar. If we activate Nibiru, that will trigger the Flame Burst to summon. The Flame Burst will then equip in the Mascarina. But when else are you going to Nibiru? If we make an Apollo USA, then you can't Nibiru. If we don't make Apollo, we could still make a Promethean Princess. And then if you save your Nibiru for that, you're just giving them a better field. So we just have to Nibiru. It sucks, but we gotta do it. Come forth and summon, triggering the field spell, and you're gonna see why this is anti-Nibiru, because now we got Flame Burge, we equipped the Mascarina. Was it really that big of a deal? Not really. We're gonna look at the opponent's hand, get that evenly matched out of here, even though we would have to suicide the Nibiru to even activate it, which I'm thinking we would have been able to do so. And we have our Imperm randomly being drawn off of the Seeker. Let's see what we do. We are dependent on the main phase to use that Mascarina. We're gonna Imperm, negate the Ariana, scooping it up off of that Impermanence play. Imperm scoop, damn. Pot of A, go for that draw too. We can no longer draw for the rest of the turn here. Ariana, get Valor negated. This is where we have the really cool play of Chandelier, send the big welcome, then chain the big welcome to spin back the Ariana to dodge the Valor. We're not doing that here. No, thank you. We're now gonna send the lovely to the graveyard to set up a welcome. So instead we're gonna have, okay, I guess we would pretty much have the same field anyway. We'd have an Ariana in the hand. We would have searched for a welcome. Discarding Nibiru to summon our Black Witch. We are on summon number one. Now, with the Super Palmarization, we're gonna be fusing with that Diablo Star to Shokan into a Mu Dragon. Okay, uh, wow. Uh, set a Seeker, which pretty much tells your opponent, I have an original already in my hand. And if you're telling your opponent you already have an original in the hand, you need that face-up Diablo Star to use it to send it to the graveyard. So I have this in my hand. I need Diablo Star. I'm gonna super poly with it so you can't use it. Makes sense. Called by the chandelier early. Okay, I, I'm thinking, so this is a huge mind game. What's the mind game exactly? 
it, it, it's this is a very difficult turn actually. I, I don't even know what the correct player to do. If you set called by, they summon Lovely from the grave. If you hold called by and they hold Big Welcome, then you're about to end your turn with called by in your hand and you're not gonna be able to finger that Lovely. If you finger Lovely early, they're gonna reborn her to dodge the finger. So what do you do? Do you set your finger, they summon her? Do you play the finger early? You obviously don't. Do you hope they activate their card? Then you could chain to it, but then you may be ending your turn. It's a situation. I think holding on to the finger was the correct play. You have turn player priority to activate your finger, and then you pass priority to the opponent. Only with a double pass at the end phase does the turn end. So you didn't even give them an opportunity to even activate this. It, this wasn't a situation where they were not gonna activate it. You didn't even give them a chance. But by giving them a chance, you are ending your turn to not finger their lovely. So is it really even that big of a mind game? I think the correct play simply was just, just wait, just wait. You had to wait. I think that was the only play, just wait. Now Lovely's here, she doesn't get called by, and I think it, that, that's it, that's it. The whole duel was on the activation timing of that finger. To set it, to activate it early, or to wait. Waiting was the play, and was there any way for Chris to play around them waiting with their finger? Wouldn't you think that they're maybe setting it? I, I mean, I, I guess that would be the mind game of Chris choosing to not activate. And then we go, why didn't you activate? And he'd be like, well, what if he kept a finger in his hand? But then what if the finger was set? So it's like the real mind game was Chris. The correct play was to not activate unless they activate. And then it was up to Chris to be big brain. Yoinking that Nibiru, 3K to the face, just like that. Labyrinth winning. Out Maxi Labyrinth is dominating. How does this make sense? Snake Eye Ash into the Imperance. What I really like about today's No Maxi tournament is you could really see when to use your disruptions. You could learn the better timing of your disruptions much more specifically than just seeing people drop maxis then end their turn. So this is gonna be the tournament to study on how to play. It's just, it's just unironically more relevant to the meta with maxi ban than with maxi to get better at the game. Now the lady, it can't be targeted. So if he attacks before, does the link rebo target? It states that you are non-targeting changing the attack. So even if we set before, it did not matter. End the turn, end phase, welcome Labyrinth. Now, uh, some people may be thinking you should save the Ash for the big welcome. If you save for big welcome, then you actually can't use it against big welcome because welcome could summon a lovely. Lovely states you can't chain monsters to traps and then both would go through and then your Ash does nothing. Come forth, nothing, as we then have big welcome. Big welcome it up, chain the lady to the big welcome. Imperm, negate the lady. Since you have no set cards, it is targetable right now. This does work out. And then the lovely comes out and it will not be negated. So it will be able to destroy the bluffed triple tactics talent. Bluff it up. Lady can be resummoned within their turn so that we don't play into the Nibiru on the follow up turn. Now through Muckraker, we could definitely go under uh, into five summons. This is summon number one. Muckraker, then Reborn. I think even with Muckraker, it would not happen. Did we have Lethal with Muckraker? Was there a reason uh, to, uh, was Muckraker enough? I don't think so. We are gonna discard, activate the Welcome Labyrinth for that extra damage on the field, not needed. Muckraker is trading the Ariana for the Muckraker, which is 1,600 for 1,000, so. Lethal damage, just like that, a very quick game one victory. Very nice. I see rollback. I want to see some rollback plays. You have Drone Lockbird, which is not that great against Snake Eyes.
for the show. Conan, let's speed this up and let's get to it. We have Promethean, we have Mascarina Link. Ariana is going to be triggering the field spell to come forth and summon, which chain link blocks the Ash. Not that you want to use Ash on Ariana. You want to save it for big welcome or welcome. Double flame burst in the fields. Now got the lady. Flame burst, summoning Mascarina. What do we actually go into here? What's the better play? Goddess can negate big welcome. So maybe Goddess is actually the play. It is. Goddess negate big welcome. What? Goddess equals surrender? If you want to beat Labyrinth, summon Goddess to negate big welcome. Damn. Now, regular welcome cannot be negated by the Goddess, but big welcome can. Interesting. Goddess equals surrender. Enemy controller. Should be interesting. We have no hand traps to be dealing with Labyrinth here as we set up our big welcome. Hopefully we draw into an ash. We could use that big welcome right here, right now as we add the clock, discard the clock, then use our big welcome. Big welcome summoning from the hand, grave, or deck. We're chaining Lady to the big welcome, so you do want to try to chain link block it if you can. Daruma being the anti-link card. You don't like links, you play Daruma. Return back the lady, randomly pop a card from the hand, which is safe to do here because they don't have two level one fires in the grave. If you were to randomly pop a flame burge, goodbye one for one. As we then recycle our big welcome and we got quite the fields. All right, there's the ash. <laughs> okay, top decked ash, just like that. Do we econ take to dodge the impermanence? We would get the effect to add Poplar, summon Poplar, and have another body on the field. Maybe we do. Yes, we do. Econ take. Come to me, Lovely. Now, we can return the Lovely back, which means we can't trigger Lovely to pop a card in the field. But what you could do, which is kind of weird, you could return Lovely, then trigger Ariana to resummon Lovely, but you're still not popping a card on the field. Let's just resolve it. Summon Lady, return Lovely, dodge the control take, trigger the Ariana, draw a card, re-special summon Lovely back onto the field. Ash is negating Lovely. And yeah, uh, we didn't Ash a big welcome. Why didn't we? Oh, we could not. We could not because Lovely makes it so you cannot Ash big welcome because, you know, that would have been better, which was not possible to do. So we're instead, we're not just negating an upstart goblin, we're negating the ability to reborn Lovely back onto the field. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. The secret effect of Lovely. Now, Daruma does not trigger your cards that require a monster to leave a field through a trap effect because the effect of a Daruma does not make any monsters leave the field. It does, but it doesn't. It makes your opponent have their monster leave the field. So your opponent makes the monster leave the field, not the trap. The trap makes the player, not the monster directly. You understand. Lady come forth and summon afterward after Daruma flipping the field face down, thus making the original sinful not activatable whatsoever here. Daruma countering links. Daruma countering the original sinful. Big welcome, return back our Ariana, not the opponent's monster here. Interesting. Guess we don't want to open ourselves up to potentially getting impermed. Reset up the welcome, trigger the Stovey to summon itself onto the field. Chaos Angel on summon, banishing the Poplar on the field. Be gone, you go. 6,500 damage, resummon that Ariana, which is why we would want to return that back to the hand instead. It just like that. 8,100 damage. Labyrinth putting up an amazing fight against Snake Eyes. There you go. Just like that. Hmm. Oh, this must go to the graveyard to activate. No, it doesn't. You could discard this card. So uh, the shifter wasn't late, but it is in the graveyard, which could be reborn with the Stardust Dragon. So uh, you probably would still want it in the graveyard. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. Not forced to D-Shifter. And the 
piercer, summon the piercer. Now, we do not want the soul piercer to go to the grave. It only triggers if sent to the grave. But now they Baguska pass. But we have impermanence, so who cares about Baguska? Does Exorcister get Nibiru? Martha, summon, exceed, normal, summon, exceed. Overlay exceeds like seven summons, so yes. But we have cross out designate if we play Nibiru ourselves. Mikalis for summon three. Mikalis could search for a Pax, which could give us another monster, or we could just be happy with this and not play into that Nibiru. We're gonna be banishing a card on the field or in the graveyard. Goodbye to the Baguska, negated by the impermanence. Now, the Mikalis is not disruption, it can no longer banish a card. But the Vadis could turn into disruption if you manipulate a card from either player's graveyard. Okay. Which we're not going to. We have nothing. Macalus could search. Get searching. Macalus detach. Come to us a Pax. Pax could then search an Exosister from the deck here, which will be the Martha. Martha for control, no monsters or exceeds only. Get Ash. Uh, what? No Ash? Like, you have to Ash Martha. You would get fingered or you would get cross outed, but I mean, you still gotta try, right? We have Gabrine getting negated by the Veiler as the called by fingers the Veiler. Negate. What is Gabrine trying to accomplish here? Gabrine is trying to boost up York C's monsters by plus 800. And that includes newly summoned monsters so the magnifica at 28 goes up to 3600 damage mate and has the ability to double attack but we get nibiru but we have cross out designate but we had ash which could have eaten up the cross out or the called by negate why did we hold on to ash am i missing something michalis is here attack 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 game we're holding ash for game two all up super heavy sam playing branded fusion okay just like that we have albion the sanctifier dragon not even going into a mirror jade this you know it gets fairy tale snow in the graveyard which is not going to be so good because we don't have that many cards in the grave but it has the effect to summon an albaz discard a card, then fuse with the opposing field to then go into a Mirror Jade, right? Where's your Mirror Jade? We have Mirror Jade and Sprind. Now the Sprind will instead of an extra deck monster to use with the Albaz. So this is what the Exosister player has to have on the field in order to be fused with. Or the Sprind states an effect monster special summon this turn. So if we wanted to fuse with a Martha, that could be another play. We have Stella, which could summon a monster from the hand, Sophia. So we do have this opportunity if we wanted to, to Albaz and fuse with the Sophia, or we could wait. But by waiting, oh wait, wouldn't Macalus be a counter to the Albion? You summon Macalus, then they can't even really activate because then you chain banish. Go on Castapel. Castapel gets searching, and now we're gonna fire off our Albaz play, plus Baylor negate your search. You will not be searching for Martha, but we still could through packs. And should you negate the packs with Ash? I would say no. I would say you negate Martha, but Martha actually can't even activate if there's a snow on the field. So snow turns off Martha. So maybe it is actually okay to negate the packs with Ash, possibly. Packs into Martha. Let's read the Martha effect. If you control no monsters or only Xyz, we control snow because you gave it to us. Now we can't Martha. Realizing that, we're just setting up our back row and ending. Damn. And what's interesting about giving them Fairy Tale Snow, Fairy Tale Snow can't even flip down the Albion because it's untargetable. Got Banky, but we need to control a Super Heavy Samurai to activate its effect to search our deck for a Piercer, but we can't normal summon, so we equip it, then send it to the Graver to trigger its effect, so then search our deck. We have Scarecrow now. Piercer come to me, Scales, discard Scales, Reborn Scales, then Scales, Reborn, the Piercer. Ooh, we got an evenly match in the end phase that we wouldn't really actually want to do. If we activate the Scarecrow, they could chain Vadis to summon from the deck two of the Exorcisters, which would then trigger off of you manipulating the Grave. So we passed.
We're not going to even do it. We do not want to touch the grave. We're touching the grave right now, though. So Vadis summon two from the deck, double trigger. This is a situation. Ash negate, situation negated. Martha, unusable, because now you're going to have a body on your field again. So the Albion Sanctifier is pretty damn annoying. There you go. Uh, what was the purpose of this? To turn off Martha. Martha's turned off. We have the Aratama into the Sakitama. We're going to rank four Xyz into the Castapel. Castapel, detach, search the deck for Elise. Martha can now be used, though, since we only control an Xyz. Summoning from the deck an Elise. Special summon Elise because we control an Exosister. 2-0? <laughs> oh? Damn! Exosister built to beat Snake Eyes, defeating non-Snake Eyes decks. No max C. Exosister stocks going up somehow. Begin. Huh? Ricardetto, dead. Living Fossil, dead. Reborn from the grave, reborn from the grave. Nothing to reborn from the grave, so dead, dead, dead. Okay. But uh, Branded also dead. Ricardetto attacking, which, uh, what the heck is going on? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is bad. Both players' opening turns are just horrible. Just no play after no play. We have Almace finally to do something. Equipping a Durendal, Durendal searcher deck for the Ogier. Ogier can normal summon, send a Turpin from the deck to the grave. Turpin could get fingered. We could also Super Poly before they make an Ice Sold. Discard to fuse with the field, making a Garura. We still have called by an Imperm. Finger the Ogier. Negate the Reborn. Well, not negate, but banish it so it does not get reborn. We can't triple tactics talent. We got super polyed, we got fingered, and the TTT is still dead. This is 3k damage. I don't know why they added this effect where it just punches for double damage. Okay. Finally, Seeker. Seek out a good play. Is it correct to imperm the Diablo Star if you know that they have a dead hand that's not been doing much? Super Polly, so the original Sinful Spoil has nothing to send to the Graver, but we still have our normal summon, so that's not true. So with the original Sinful and a normal summoned Ash or the Asto Astolfa, what the heck? I've never seen her before. Damn. Uh, oh, uh, yep, yeah, okay, damn. TTT taking the Dragos to Pelia to send it to the graveyard, which would have been a monster negate disrupting our plays. Renan add back the banished oak gear, imperm negate. What does she do? You can banish a fire warrior from your hand or graveyard, special summon this card from the hand. Which, uh, did we do that? Now we just normal summoned her. Shokan into the eye sold. Let's speed this up through the eye sold play, add the flint. Send three equip cards, summon a level three, add, activate the Astophila. What did, what did it do? Banish this card. During your second standby phase, you can special summon a fire that is banished from the grave? That sounds horrible. During your second standby phase? So, turn 11? What? Okay. During your next game, <laughs> carries over to game two. Imperm onto the Angelica. She jumps off the field in response to an impermanence. She's not even disruption herself. Huh? Okay. We didn't summon a Roland anyway. Return back in the deck with the Magus to then draw a card, drawing into Moonlit Chill. Uh, thrust bait, yeah, you did get baited. You got baited, yep. We baited, thrust, branded fusion, but we drew into a Ghost Mourner because of you forcing that bait. The bait worked, mate, that worked out, but then we also got ashed. Now, you know, we already had the ash, so. Negate, very good. Don't use the ash on the thrust. 
save it for the branded fusion. Okay, it's good. It's it's a gold sarcophagus. What? Add Durandal Promethean Reborn of Fire. Activate Reborn from the graveyard. Lock and us into warrior monsters only. Fire Flint if we control a warrior. It doesn't even have to be fire. Come forth and summon. Further link this up into the Ferocious Flame Swordsman. We're not locked into fire monsters only. Making a Wind Baron to Floor. Baron to Floor. Pop the card in the field. Trigger the Magus. Return three cards. Draw a card. And just like that, Infernoble without Charles wins the game. Imperm forcing the activate, not forcing, but uh, tricking them to activate to then thrust. But, you know, it didn't really matter. Damn. Send an Albas to the graveyard. And if more people call judges, then soft cheating would happen less. A soft cheater could soft cheat all day unless they're getting judges called on them all day. There's this, it's a paradox with, let's say, League of Legends. Someone has a bad game, they disconnect because uh, let's say a lightning storm happens and you don't want to report them because it was out of their control. What I would say is that if this is a rare circumstance where you're reporting them for something that was out of their control, then the report does nothing anyway. But if this is a reoccurring theme where they are continually disconnecting by accident out of their control, then the reports stack up, they properly get punished. So carry that over to Yu-Gi-Oh! If this person actually doesn't know better and they accidentally tried it in a legal play, they did this, this, and or that, I think the judges should be notified so they could be like, hey, all is fine, you made a mistake. But then if they keep on making that mistake, they're gonna stop doing it, they're gonna stop soft cheating, they're not gonna do it. And I'm sure that carries over into multiple tournaments. The judge is gonna say, hey, I remember you in the last YCS trying the same exact play and now you're doing it again, you're banned. Connector, and it actually is a rule and an expectation. I don't want to say a rule, but judges do have stricter requirements for players that are considered experienced. So I, I believe it would be correct, and they do abide by this, that they could rule the same scenario differently for an experienced player that regularly shows up and does well at YCSs versus another player that they don't recognize because maybe they're newer or don't do as well at YCSs. Shokan into the I sold. Come to us for Cardetto, which cannot be summoned this turn. Send from the deck four equip cards, a special summon our O gear, sending the immortal Phoenix gear freed here. Renaud to add it back to the hand, banish and equip, come forth and summon. And we have Infernoble clapping up branded Despia, just like that 8,000 damage game. No max C, Infernoble is the way. Hajime. All right, that's a 2-0. Let's get to it. Heritage of the Chalice gets searching. Evenly matched is not good against Infernoble. Infernoble could set up multiple spell and trap card negates, multiple Emperor Charles, so we could negate at least two traps. And, but under Nibiru, I don't think that Infernoble could play against Nibiru. No, they play right into that Nibiru. So while we lose to Max C, if there's no Max C, there's more Nibirus, we then lose to Nibiru instead. So I guess the question is, do we really need Max C to keep the meta in check when I feel like Nibiru and Droll and Lockbird, those two cards do enough on their own. I think so. I think the combo decks get uh, severely hit by those two cards, just like that. Instead of going on for 10 more minutes of their turn, nibiru boom. And, and it, you know, it's perceived to be a lot more fair too, right? Uh, nibiru, I could still make plays. It's not completely over. Now, there's an interesting ruling here. You Nibiru swing in, kill Nibiru, activate evenly. They lose everything because you can't banish a token face down, so they have to banish everything but the token. That's exactly what we're doing. Evenly match at the end of the battle phase. It's not even a choice. Goodbye to everything but the token. And the Gamma is blocked from being used because of the token. So, damn. 
Exo Sister. Oh, what I'm seeing, the reoccurring theme in today's tournament is evenly match is good. Evenly match in Exo Sister has been clapping. Evenly matched in Labyrinth has been clapping, and then they could transaction rollback to copy the evenly matched if it were to, let's say, be negated. Let's keep on going. McAllis will have the ability to banish a card in the field or in the graveyard of the turn it's summoned. Otherwise, it could also search for a spell or trap from your deck. We're going to activate the banish effect, banishing the Promethean Princess, which was not summonable because we did not have a fire monster on the field. We have Magnifica, which you could potentially want to save its effect to banish because if you banish on your turn, you then can't use both of its effects on the next turn because all of her effects of being able to banish or summon a monster that banishes requires materials. So we're going to have the ability to banish, 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 banish. We have four banishes. Quadra banish, can we play through all four? That's going to be banish number one. Okay. Ash negates. Gamma? No Gamma on the Ash? Okay, sure, sure. Living Fossil. Magnifica is gonna be going into the other effect here, which will be resulting in a Banish, but we're gonna Gamma to negate. Badis come forth and summon from the deck, which will be triggered off of the Living Fossil here. So Magnifica is dead. We lose that Banish, but we still have double Banish with Returnia. And now this is where things get crazy. You moved the card from the grave, and we made sure to Vadis in response to it. So this will activate to go into Macalus, which is a banish. And then this will activate going into maybe a monster negate. And then Returnia could still uh, get banish in. Let's go. Banish in monster negate is what I'm thinking we're going to be going into here. At least into the effect of banish. Okay. Stella into... This is the negate, right? Target, no, this is actually a different one. This is, your opponent cannot activate cards in their graveyard, so no graveyard activations. All the Infernoble cards in the grave that activate to equip, not gonna be usable. All right. And we're using the effect of Macaus to banish the Renaud. Renaud be gone. And we still have Returnia banish. Returnia, banish the Dolphin, double banish. As we said, banish, 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 or banish has happened. Very well done. We do have a dead Gamma because we're probably not playing another copy of these. Wait, it's not dead. We have Driver in the Graveyard. By moving a card from the Graveyard, if we have an, a non-Xyz Exorcist on the field, it will be triggered. Gamma negate again. Multi-use Gamma because Driver was sent to the Grave. Negate. Very nice. Asophile can detach, target a monster. The opponent controls, returning it back to the hand. Armin can target a monster, then perform an Xyz. Shokan into Macalus. We do have the quick effect to banish a card in the field or in the grave. We're going to be searching our deck for the packs, which could search for Martha. Macalus, banish, and this should be game. Martha, Martha's. Now, the Gamma is not a hard once per turn. If we have another side frame driver, we could actually negate the Martha again. Summon, summon, Shokan into Gibrine. Gibrine's gonna boost up the fields and we're gonna have 7,200 damage. Yep, 72, double attack with Magnifica with the non-target monster banished on top of that. Swing one, swing two, game. Game two. We have Ash. Not saving Ash for the I sold is sus. Also, game one, there were Gammas galore. So we played right into the Gamma and did not save for the I sold. But we do have Nibiru. Triple Monster Negate plus Omni Negate with the Baron to floor, mate. End our turn. Can we deal with the Quadra Disruption, not even counting the Ash? Sakitama with the ability to perform our additional summon. 
That is a hard once per turn. We have three more disruptions. Martha negated with the extra hidden disruption of the ash. Negate. Damn that animation. Aratama, no good, because we need the Sakitama for the additional summon. Baron to floor, get popping. Open up that field. We just need to deal 8,000 damage. Let's speed this up. Can we quickly do so? As we add back the gear freed with 4,600 damage in the field, banish an equip card to come forth and summon. We are now over 8,000 damage to battle. We go taking this into game number three. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know who to root for. I, I don't root for the players. I root for the decks. I like Infernoble. I like Exosister. Who do you want to see go into the grand finale? We have Martha. They have no disruption. We got plays. Triple Tactics talent is really good against Exosister because the Magnifica has a way to play around targeting removal. If you were to target the Magnifica with removal, she could jump off the field into the Macalus. But because the TTT is non-target take control, it specifically screws them over. And their trap cards require them to control an Exosister. So if you take control of their Exosister, they then can't use their back row. The returning of that is. The Vadis is activatable even if you don't control an Exosister. And the Armit is you target an Exosister to summon an Xyz with a different name. So we have Banish, Banish as our main two disruptions. This could turn into a Monster Negate, so it's kind of three. Private, uh, public disruptions that is in a way, our core disruptions. We have a Private Ash Blossom Negate on the Seeker. Okay, now the TTT is activatable. Now we're in big trouble. So what do we do here? Ooh, um... Are we banishing ourselves? What are we doing? We're, we're banishing ourselves. Banish one card your opponent controls, and we are also going to uh, be taking control of our new monster that we're giving them. Okay, goodbye to the Triple Tactics talent. As we then come forth and summon... Yeah, it just takes it. Okay. Yep. Martha get popped after looking at the hand because we control a 2800 attack monster. Noble Arms Museum. We still have the Vadis, which is activatable. We get called by Summon Martha to trigger it early to go into Macalus. So it's not over. Send four equip cards to summon the Ogier. Ogier, send the Phoenix Gear Freed. We're going to then equip the Durendal to then search our deck for the Astolfo. What the heck? The Deese is going to get summoning early. Summon for the deck, Elise and Stella. We do have Armint, which is activatable onto one of our Exorcisters. We're going to be chaining the Armint right here, right now. Let's do it. Shokaning into Macalus. Macalus ready with the targeting banish effect of a card on the field or in the graveyard. Renaud's going to be adding back a banished card. I'm not manipulating the grave. I'm manipulating the banished pile. Thus, the Elise does not get triggered. Ooh, Nightingale. Attacking directly to then get Zeus in. This is a problem indeed. Zeus is ready to wipe up the field here. Did we make a big mistake? Had we summoned, could we have summoned Martha and Elise, Armin onto the Elise to make a Macalus, call by the grave to trigger the Martha to go into a monster negate, negate the Nightingale so it could not attack directly, right? Let me know if I'm incorrect on that play. Exactly, true, true, okay. Goodbye to the Gear Freed. Goodbye to the entire field. Astolfo with the Gold Sark effect. Get ready for that in two turns. It's going to summon a fire monster that is banished or in the grave. It's counting down. This is it. Turn one. One more turn in the Astolfo effect, just like Exodia will be resolving. 
show Khan into the Promethean Prince. Please don't win the duel early, right? We want to see the Astolfo. There you go. You got negated. 2,700. The Astolfo will be resolving in one more turn. This is our final chance before the Astolfo resolves. Are we going to lose? We need a Pax. We need a Martha. If we don't have Pax or Martha, I think those are the only two cards we could draw into. Huh? We ripped into a Pax. This is not pre-recorded. Wait, we're out of Martha? Where's Martha? Are we out of Elise's? Oh my gosh, we're out of Elise. No Elise, no Elise? Oh my gosh. So that wasn't good. We couldn't resolve a Martha. Martha was an illegal activation. Astolfo summoning herself and immortal Phoenix Gearfried onto the field. Triggering the Irene. Irene going into a Macallus, which is going to be a targeting banish. All right. Solfo's not too broken here. Activate, banishing the Gearfried before it has the ability to negate its effect. At 1800 defense, very easily attacked over by the Promethean Princess. Opening up Exorcister for lethal damage. Lethal. I knew this was the only way to stop Snake Eyes from making it to the grand finale. We didn't have to restrict anything. We didn't have to ban anything besides Max C. That was it. And somehow Snake Eyes just didn't do it. You would think Snake Eyes would be better with no Max C, but uh, due to so many different other circumstances from Max C being banned, reducing the amount of ashes being used, it just ended up making it so Snake Eyes could not get top four. Are they the majority of the top 16? I think they still are. We have Lady chained to the welcome as we then chain our big welcome, chaining a big welcome, chain link five. This is gonna get crazy. Let's see what happens here. Summoning from the deck our lovely, which will trigger to pop a card on the fields. But this result, so what's happening here is because the Labyrinth Labyrinth is not considered a resolved effect on the field yet. Our big welcome will not be able to pop a card in the field non-targeting because this needs to resolve. You ideally do not want to chain to your field spell activation unless you really have to. So we are going to return, not destroy, as I said, setting up a Dogmatica Punishment. L regular labyrinth summoning as the labyrinth labyrinth now finally resolves we are triggering lovely triggering chandelier triggering ariana triggering the lovely so we have double non-target poppage i will pop a card from your hand or field i don't tell you until resolution you will pop a card from my hand or field and you will not tell me until resolution add the chandelier summon the torby pop the lovely but the lovely will still pop us Trigger the Ariana, get poppin', add the chandelier, resolve the, both lovelies killed each other here. Ariana grabbing the clock, clock will make it so the Dogmatica Punishment newly set this turn will be activatable. Discarding Daruma for the chandelier to set up a welcome card from the deck to then trigger the clock to summon itself onto the field or add back to the hand. We're going to be summoning it onto the field, linking it off into a relinquished Anima. Anima sucking up the Torby. Torby jumping off the field, just forcing the activation early, discarding a card from the hand. Now with this forced activation, I could pop that card with my Dogmatica Punishment. I could end Tis get poppin'. So by forcing that early activation, I think that maybe was ideal. And then we're gonna summon a Dark, Dark Steal your lovely, lovely recycle a trap from the graveyard back onto the field. We're actually using Welcome Labyrinth and through the effect of the Labyrinth Labyrinth non-target popping a card in the field. We are gonna get blocked up by the Lady blocking our attack. Was the Entis play better to pop the big Welcome on the field instead of using Welcome Labyrinth? Pot E going for that draw too. We cannot draw anymore within the rest of this turn. Now this is huge. With the transaction rollback in the grave, even being sent there by a cost, it's activatable right away, right then and there. We are threatening to non-target destroy a card on the field here. Now, what could transaction rollback copy? We could copy 
summon from the deck, then return, summon from the deck. Uh, you know, this is from the hand, deck, or grave. This is non-target pop card in the field, but the lady cannot be popped. Transaction rollback, copying the big welcome. Not using the big welcome in our back row. Summon a clock, return the clock, summon, return, pop, pop the big welcome. Big welcome still activatable in the grave to banish and then spin a card back. We're gonna trigger the welcome, trigger the stovey, summon, set by summoning the stovey. We can make a Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel could banish any card in the field. The lady can't get popped by the lovely because it's indestructible. The Ariana's gonna draw a card, then summon or set a trap or a monster, summon. We're going for that spin back, spin that lovely back, which will just be resummoned with the Ariana. Wait, that's our lovely. <laughs> Never mind. Give me my lovely back to my hand, not yours. So you're not gonna Ariana summon it back. What's with that? We're just stealing everyone's cards here. Stovey gets summoned and come forth. Resolve the welcome. Not going into a Chaos Angel. We're instead activating the Stovey to set up a Labyrinth Labyrinth, which will now make it to our welcome. Traps will be non-target destroyer card in the field with the Ku Clock. Activate the welcome for the non-target pop. Chain the lady to be able to set a new trap from the deck. Chain our lady to their trap to also set a new trap from our deck. The newly set trap will be activatable on the resolution of the clock. So what's that new trap gonna be? Not that one, we can't activate that. We are going to be drawn to Karagurura. Imperm will be activatable, the turn it has been set. As we non-target pop a card in the field, non-target popping the opposing Labyrinth Labyrinth here. This will send Garura, this will draw a card. And with Chandelier and Stovey, the, we could discard the transaction rollback to copy a trap in the grave. The newly set Imperm due to the Ku Clock is negating the Ariana here. Double 3K, untargetable, indestructible. Transaction rollback is now in the grave, ready to copy. Clock is gonna be triggered, adding itself in the graveyard back to the hand. Transaction rollback, copying the effect of Daruma Cannon. Flip the whole field face down. Damn. Both were untargetable and indestructible, but flipped face down by the Daruma. Copy Daruma is huge. Off the top of the deck, we got our big welcome flipping back up our field to battle. We go 3K Lady bigger than the 2900 defensive Lady. Our Dragon Ice Prison is going to steal your Lovely so that you can't summon Lovely from your grave. And if we banish your Lovely, it's gone for the rest of the duel. There's no way to get it back. Chandelier discard, set up the welcome. We have the setting a transaction rollback, which could copy a trap from the opponent's graveyard at the cost of half of our life points. Banish Lovely, banish the opposing player. That Lovely is now gone for the rest of the duel here. As we spin back our lady, trigger the Stovey and Chandelier, triggering our welcome Labyrinth. And what else here? Gia, was this the game that went into time, but we disabled time? Labyrinth, Labyrinth? because <laughs> they're popping off. Apparently this match went over 60 minutes, maybe 70 or 80 minutes. Chain Link 7, Ku Clock add from the graveyard back to our hand. We got the Chandelier add back after a monster left the field. Stovey summon onto the field instead of adding back to the hand like a Chandelier. Triggering the Labyrinth Labyrinth to after a non-Labyrinth trap has been activated, which, which was the Ice Dragon Prison to summon a Fiend from the Hander Graveyard, which could be a Chaos Angel if you want to, to trigger its effect to banish. Clock being sent to the Graveyard, making the Welcome Labyrinth activatable, using the field spell to non-target pop a card in the field. So we couldn't respond with the Stovia as soon as we knew that it was going to be destroyed. Lady's going to summon. All the ladies on the field cannot be targeted or be destroyed by card effect. Pop in that transaction rollback, which we knew was there. So we want them to pay half their life points in order to activate it. Summoning the Ariana, adding the Stovey. To battle we go, take out the Chandelier. To MP2, we're gonna do an L set. As we then big welcome, spin a card in the field back to the hand, only because we control a level eight or higher fiend. We're gonna transaction rollback, copy the effect of Dogmatic of Punishment, sending a Chaos Angel to take out the lovely. Now. Let's update the situation here. The opposing player Alpha has their Lovely banished and we have Chris with Lovely still in the graveyard. Let's check how many big welcomes we still have in the game here. Two big welcomes are gone for Chris 
and none for alpha. Okay. We are going to muck raker it up. We're going to target the lovely to then discard Nibiru to reborn the lovely. And we can't use our big welcome to summon a lovely to pop the muckraker to stop this from happening. And if you were to try to do that, the muckraker will protect your card from being destroyed by tributing another card instead. Now we are going, oh, this is interesting. What are we doing? Big welcome spin back. Wouldn't that trigger Ariana to just summon it back on the field? Why are we chaining big welcome to their big welcome when it does the same exact thing? What? They are spinning back but we're gonna spin back. But the Ariana triggers anyway, right? If a monster leaves the, oh, by your normal trap effect, correct. Correction, only from our normal trap does it trigger. Then we draw, then we summon, so, okay. But uh, couldn't we have spun, okay, uh, we could have spun one of their monsters instead to trigger the same effect. So I think we could have still spun something else besides the ladies that were untargetable. But would we want to spin a Stovey or the Ariana back to the hand? Draw a card after setting with the Welcome Labyrinth. Draw then Special Summon Lovely back onto the field. Is Lovely activated to grab a trap from the graveyard yet? No, it has not. We have the Ice Dragon Prison here. We're not big enough to take out the 3,000 attack indestructible ladies. Now the Muckraker, if you were to be destroyed by battle or card effect, we will tribute a Fiend Monster instead. We're going to be using Big Welcome Labyrinth in response to the Dragon Ice Prison. Now, the Dragon Ice Prison targeting the clock, we could use the Big Welcome to send that clock from the grave back onto the field to dodge the Dragon Ice Prison. We're going to use Welcome Labyrinth when comboed up with a field spell to pop a card in the field non-targeting, where the ladies at this moment can be destroyed. They do not have a set card. They are destroyed. Now, to protect them from being destroyed, what we could have done is we could have chained the Chandelier to the Welcome Labyrinth here to set a card before they destroy, thus the Lady would have been protected from destruction. If we even have a Labyrinth card left in the deck to do that, which I don't know if this is even activatable. Stovey, trigger, Welcome Labyrinth, trigger. Uh, actually, yes, the hidden effect of Lovely makes it so you cannot chain monster effects to trap, so that big brain play was too big brain. Trigger the Ariana. Oh my Jesus, this duel is freaking wild, Chainlink <laughs> 6. Let's get to it. So, so far for the mirror match, I think it's important to note that you want to banish the opponent's lovely and you want to establish the field spell. Banish their lovely, establish a field spell, and you should just naturally win from there is what I'm thinking. Chaos Angel is here. On summon, banish a card on the field. Goodbye to the love. Both lovelies are gone, but we have the field spell and they don't. Shokan into the Muckraker, which will target a monster into the graveyard to reborn it by discarding. This is a double Chaos Angel banish. Back to back, banish, banish. On summon, banish the field spell. Neither player has lovely. Neither player has the field spell. Damn. Set this up. What's going to happen here? How do we take out that Chaos Angel? We have Pot of P banishing until we only have three cards, two cards left in our extra deck. Digging deep or Skill Drain is in our deck. Oh my gosh, we have Super Polymerization. Exactly what we need. We're going to use the Big Welcome Labyrinth to spin the Muckraker we control back to our hand to trigger the Stovey and the Chandelier to summon and be added back to the hand here. Uh, yeah, it's like, why are we not super polying? Well, uh, you banish from your extra deck first, then you add the super poly. What is in our extra deck? A Garura! Two monsters with the same type and attribute, but different names. Okay. Call by the Grave is going to be fingering the lady from the graveyard and negating the ladies on the field. They will no longer be protected from effect destruction nor being untargetable. Set pass, big enough to take out that Stovey. All righty, setting that Super Poly. The Chaos Angel is a Fiend and a Dark, so another Fiend and Dark. Going in for that lethal damage here. Super Poly, discard the Dead Gamma. 
Using with the Chaos Angel and our own chandelier to make our final card from our extra deck. We have zero cards left. Nothing left in the extra deck. The lady is negated from the called by, right? She got fingered. She did not? Wait. Did she dodge the finger? Did a did a finger happen that I didn't uh, I, I I I miscounted where the finger happened? What happened with the finger? Oh, we fingered Muckraker and not the lady. Why did I think we were fingering the lady? Okay, different card got fingered. Muckraker for the third time, but is fingered, would have summoned the Chaos Angel to banish a card off of the field. Muckraker continually recycling the Chaos Angel, plus the field spell recycling the Chaos Angel. Multiple ways to banish, but still, Alpha has surrendered to Chris. Let's take this into game two. Ariana grabbing our chandelier. Chandelier discarding our droll in Lockbird. We don't need that. We need to establish the field spell and protect the field spell. We have that non-target poppage here with welcome plus big welcome. And if we can get a lady, I should say a lovely on the field, then they can't chain any monster effects to our traps. We're gonna use big welcome, chain our own big welcome. Chandelier is going to be setting up a card here so that the field spell has something to pop. Wouldn't they have nothing to pop if you don't chain? Now they could pop it if they want to. Maybe it's bait. You're baiting it. Return back. Pop the welcome where they otherwise had nothing to pop. Trigger the lovely to pop a card from the hand. Nope. We're waiting. We're waiting. We don't pop a card from the hand with lovely. Interesting. When else can we trigger her effect? How are we gonna pop again? Am I missing something? Only, oh, only when it pops a monster, correct. Thank you, thank you very much. It does not trigger because we popped the back row, not a monster. We're gonna use Dogmatica Punishment to pop the lovely, sending a Triumph Brigade to send a Garura to draw a card here. Very well done. Setting up with a big welcome. Ku Klux gonna be adding from the graveyard back to the hand or be summoning. To the face we go, but we're gonna be summoning a 20, she's got a thick D at 2100, blocking the opposing Ariana attack, searching for a lady. Now we have Labyrinth versus Labyrinth Field Spell. But we don't have a trap set up. Only Chris has an activatable Big Welcome Labyrinth to get popping. Now there was an opportunity to activate the Big Welcome early to try to pop the lady before they set a card. The first thing Alpha wanted to do was set a card to make the lady indestructible by card effect. And you know, they could have Big Welcome played from the graveyard too. To battle we go. Big Welcome, we're gonna use Lady to change the Big Welcome, using our Big Welcome in the graveyard to spin the field spell back to the hand so it does not allow the Big Welcome to destroy a card in the field non-targeting. So our field's protected until we summon a lovely return to Ariana, then activate to pop a card besides the lady because it's indestructible. Welcome set itself onto the field. Stovey summon itself onto the field. Chandelier add from the graveyard back to the hand here. Welcome Labyrinth come forth and summon from the deck. When comboed up with our Labyrinth Labyrinth, this will be a non-target pop. Taking out that lovely, wipe out that fool. We can't take out the ladies with the resolved effect of lovely. We have Stovey to help block and attack. Goodbye to the Dogmatica punishment in the back row. Had we had a Stovey in the graveyard or summoned a Stovey from the deck instead of a lady, we could have maybe left up the lovely on the field if they were to not take out the Stovey with the resolved effect non-target destroy of the lovely to then main phase two make a chaos angel to banish the lovely on the field. Is that an idea? Don't get rid of the lovely, keep it on the field and just try to chaos angel it. Just try to banish it. Chandelier, discard Ariane here, setting up a big welcome labyrinth. Okay, attack, attack, not quite lethal. MP2 into the Muckraker. Muckraker can reborn from the graveyard, our lovely by discarding a card. Now with our newly summoned lovely, we can activate the effect to recycle a trap from the grave, which will be our dogmatic punishment. So there's a few things to consider here. We can't chain monster effects to their traps. The lady is untargetable and indestructible by card effect. 
And if they activate the Welcome Labyrinth, that will use the field spell to pop a card in the field. If we try to destroy any other monster by battle or card effect, the Muckraker could tribute itself to protect it from being destroyed. So the Lovely is kind of protected by the Muckraker. And then we have Dogmatica, which could pop multiple cards in the field. This is crazy. Labyrinth, Labyrinth. Activate our Welcome Labyrinth before it resolves. This is important to activate right here, right now, because as soon as this resolves, it turns the back row into non-target destruction. So we have to get rid of it before it resolves, before it gains that continuous effect. Psy Frame Gear Gamma, the Muckraker could protect it from destruction, but not from being negated. Oh, and it does, and it tributes, and it protects, as we said. Welcome Labyrinth from the deck into a lady, normal summon our Ariana. Ariana grabbing another lady that can only be summoned from the hand into defense. To battle we go. Dogmatica punishment. Attempt to punish the Ariana, but if there's no Ariana to punish, then we have nothing to send from our extra deck to the grave. Now by activating Dogmatica punishment, you can't even use your extra deck the next turn. The next turn, your extra deck is turned off. Now by using a non-Labyrinth track, the Labyrinth Field Spell will trigger to reborn a Fiend from the hand or grave. Add the Chandelier after the trigger. Stovey gets summoned from the graveyard. Start wiping out the field. Take out the Lovely. Get it into the grave. Goodbye to our Gamma and Cyframe Driver. We also used the Punishment ourselves. So I do want to highlight this, that if you're ever wondering why are they not making Chaos Angel, which would make a lot more sense in a lot of these plays, until the end of your next turn after this card resolves, you cannot summon from the extra deck. It's affecting both players. Draw two with the pot of E. Wipe out a lady in defense, where it's only in defense if summoned from the hand or flipped face down with the Daruma. Big welcome. Spin a card in the field back to the hand. We are going to be using Call by the Grave onto that lovely. This is our opportunity right here, right now. Finger that lovely, get her off of the field, away from the graveyard, not in the hand nor in the deck, banished for the rest of the game. That is an advancement of this duel. One player has lovely, the other doesn't. Now you have no back row cards to protect your lady from being targeted and banished. The lady has no battle destruction protection whatsoever unless you have a muckraker on the field. Big welcome. Reborn from the grave, the lady to then add the lady back to the hand, triggering the welcome, triggering the stovey, triggering the chandelier. Activate the lady on top of that stack to come forth and summon into defense. Okay, let's check the big welcomes. There's two big welcomes banished and a lovely for Chris. For Alpha, there is only one big welcome banished and they still have their lovely. Nibiru, for some freaking reason, is popping off here because we summoned more than five times. <laughs> Tributing the field as we tried to use the effect of Muckraker to reborn a monster from the graveyard. That is a fat token at 5,000 D. We have a normal summoned Ash Blossom here as we link this up into the Muckraker. Muckraker discarding permanence to reborn the Lovely. Lovely is gonna be recycling the traps in the graveyard back onto our field. Scooping that up just like that. Having access to that Lovely, prioritizing, getting the Lovely banished through the Call by the Grave or the Chaos Angel is big. Hey, we have Nibiru of our own. Ariana adding the big welcome, but Droll is just not good. We're not gonna even bother using the Droll because we want the Droll for discard fodder with our furniture cards instead. Pot of E, go for that draw two here. Come to me, Ariana could grab a furniture card which could discard the rollback. A good way to get it into the graveyard. To battle we go, having them get negated by our Ash Blossom, that is huge. Now Skill Drain. When is Skill Drain gonna pop off? negating all monsters on the field. But with Skill Drain negating the field, you could still use Big Welcome to spin your monster after activating it before it resolves, so it still act it gets does not get negated. We have the Labyrinth Labyrinth Field Spell, which we've learned is incredibly important for this match. We also have the Call by the Grave, so as soon as we get Lovely into the graveyard, we are in big trouble if we don't have an activatable Big Welcome to chain to the Call by to dodge the finger with our Lovely. And our turn, end phase with the field spell, non-target pop a card in the field. This will not trigger the lovely because since we're not taking out a monster, 
goodbye to the skill drain, transaction rollback copying the opponent's big welcome labyrinth to now trigger the lovely to pop a card on the field or in the hand. Now, because we used a non-labyrinth trap, the labyrinth labyrinth will reborn or summon from the hand a fiend monster as the stovey is also here. Goodbye to the newly set big welcome. This is all during our end phase. Stovey is discarding itself plus the chandelier from the field as we set up another activatable big welcome labyrinth. We can't chain monster effects to that, but we could activate super poly before the lovely triggers, but we could then summon lovely. Yeah, but well, then we have nothing to return back to trigger the lovely. So it's quite interesting here where, uh, no, yeah, nope, yep, okay. Summon the clock, add back the clock, use the field spell, pop with a big welcome. So there was no way to trigger lovely since there would have been no other monster in the field besides the lovely to return back to the hand. Welcome trigger, Garura trigger, draw a card, chandelier, add back. Wasting a finger on the Garura. Is it a waste or should, well, we have two fingers. Okay, one for Garura, save a finger for Lovely, always. But always consider that the Lovely could dodge your finger with a big welcome. Add back, come forth and summon. Transaction rollback, copy a trap in our graveyard at the cost of half of our life, now down to 2000 life, summoning a Lovely from the hand, deck, or grave, we finally still get to trigger that lovely, despite the super poly to stop it from triggering. And just like that, lovely labyrinth, crazy wham bam, thank you ma'am. Insane plays is now making it to the grand finale. Grand finale, maxi band, where snake eyes, not in the top four, not in the grand finale. Labyrinth is here alongside Infernoble. Infernoble still being played at 44 cards. They, even without Maxi, they couldn't cut it down to 40. Are you out of your damn mind? Hajime. Infernoble really needed to win the coin flip for game one. We have Imperm right away, negating that Ariana from searching for a Labyrinth card. Now, a bricked up labyrinth in the hand, that's not good. We probably would have wanted a chandelier or the stovey to get it into the graveyard, plus a big welcome to then reborn it, to then return the Ariana, to then pop a card in the field. So we're gonna be using the Seeker to grab a Diablo Star, using the Museum to grab any Noble Arms card from the deck to the hand, discarding the Joy Use, which we have just added from the deck to the hand, or the Summon of Diablo Star, setting up the original Sinful. Now we have the Durendal equipped onto the Diablo Star to search our deck for a Fire Flint Lady. We have not used up our normal summon yet. We're gonna be using the Dolphin to look at the hand. No, we're not yet. First, we're gonna use Renan to add the Joy Use. Dolphin is wanting to discard to look at that hand, right? Soon, maybe? Add the Astolfo. Okay, so saving the discard with Dolphin for the card we add that we can't summon this turn. A better idea, the best idea, a great idea. Let's do it, but there's double ash. So we know that they could save the second ash for the second effect of the ice sold, but they're gonna use impermanence instead. Negate, the summon of a level four monster from the deck as we sent four equipped cards from our deck to the grave. We now have original sinful sending the museum to then get ashed. Very well done. Holding the Ash for the searched for Diablo Star original Sinful as the Imperm adequately dealt with the Ice Salt. Now the Wanted Seeker will be drawing a card by returning the original, drawing into an amazing top deck into the Heritage, grabbing a Ricardetto. Now the Joy Use if sent to the Graveyard while equipped onto a monster will trigger to summon the Ricardetto from the hand to summon a monster from the grave, as the Promethean Princess will also summon an additional monster from the grave. We are now locked into Warrior Monsters only. 6,200 damage in the field, reborning our Fire Flint Lady. Not enough for lethal damage here, as we will continue our plays in main phase two. Okay. MP2 into Emperor Charles. Ending our turn as the Charles equips the Magus and Durendal using its effect when equipped to pop the Promethean Princess. This is really not good. We only have Promethean Princess as our only disruption. We don't have anything else. There's nothing else. This is nothing. But what do we... Well, we got Anima. Let's go. But the Promethean Princess will pop it. Almost was really good. 
Promethean come forth, our one and only disruption coming in hot to save our Emperor Charles, equipping the angelic ring. So now the opposing player, if they were to activate a spell, it will be negated. Promethean Princess reborn, the Astolfo tribute over for the Cyframe Driver. That is considered BM. You get one point on your towards disqualification. Thank you. Let's go to game two. Ooh, not using stove. It's like we know they have gamma and we didn't play into gamma. Or, uh, you know, we activate imperm, then we could summon lady and we don't want to discard lady. We don't want to discard Nibiru. We want to use Nibiru. We also don't want to lose our call by the grit. Let's just like, our hand was so good. We didn't want to discard anything for stovey. Interesting. Add the Noble Arm Museum. Museum, more than once per turn per copy, could search for a Noble Arms plus summon a Noble Knight from your back row. Equip onto the Turpin with the Durendal searching for a Renaud, which could special summon if you control a Fire Warrior. On summon, return the Equip card in the Graveyard back to our hand. You can now make Ice Sold. This is summon number three. No, we are going into Angelica to play around that impermanence. So what are you going to do? If you held imperm for Isolde, there is now an Angelica. You can't do anything. And the Angelica, let's read this card real quick. It is going to s the effect. You could actually negate it with impermanence if it were to activate its effect when targeted before it banishes. Because it does not banish as a cost. You send, and if you do banish this card, yup, we could imperm this, but we're holding on to it instead. Interesting. When do we whip out that impermanence? So we are on summon what? One, two, three, four, five. We're definitely under Nibiru now. When do we Nibiru? We're waiting. This is non-target pop. If, I mean, we have to imperm this, right? We don't know what he's popping. Well, he's essentially popping our impermanence as we are forced to imperm, negate the pop. Okay. Nibiru on the resolution before summoning the... What the heck are you doing? You're tributing the field, but you're not summoning Nibiru because you're sending it to the grave to the effect of the Stovey instead. This is a play you could do with the Bistials. You could activate a Bistial to banish, then discard the Bistial so it still banishes but does not summon. Keck what? set up our big welcome and we could still use our lady labyrinth we just got tributed astolfo is here we're going to be fingering the target of the living fossil to reborn the turpin which would be negated by the fossil okay what else do we have here we have another copy of the museum to search again into a joy use. Joy use can recycle a monster in the graveyard back to our hand, adding back the immortal Phoenix gear free to banish an equip card from the grave to come forth and summon. We do have Lady that is summonable. Now, we don't want to summon it because the immortal Phoenix gear freed. Ooh, we are equipping up our Astolfo to now negate the summon of the Lady. That really screwed things up. We couldn't summon it early because it would destroy it by battle or suck it up. And if we waited to summon it after the attack, on the attack, we gained an equip card. Now we can negate. I think we still have to attempt to summon it just to eat up a negate, maybe? Uh, no, we're not. Okay, uh, Imperm is dead. We're going to be using our big welcome, chain summon the lady, not using the immortal phoenix to negate the summon. So I think we're waiting for a lovely, and we're thinking that we could, if they summon lovely, return back the lady, they activate the lovely. But if you chain link block the lovely with a card in the graveyard, what's in the grave? Stovey. So Stovey will make it so lovely cannot be destroyed and negated by the gear freed. So are we gonna chain link block with lovely? That's what we could do. Are we doing it? Yeah, chain link block, chain link block. This is the block. Return the lady, lovely, then Stovey, then you can't negate. But we got Ghost Mourner, mate. Of course we're negating. We are going to negate right through that chain link block on your special summon. Negate. Well, damn. 
Targeted for an attack, send from the deck to the grave to then banish, trigger the effect of the Magus when sent to the grave to then return three cards back to the deck to then draw a card. Thank you very much. We just drew a card for free. Uh, yeah, we just like literally should not have attacked. Just no. Gear freed with the monster negate. Field spell searching for the Alb Mace. We got Durendal to search our deck for a fire monster, which will be our Renaud. Renaud can recycle a monster or we got the Magus, okay, equipping onto the gear free, then summoning the Magus onto the field. Then we're gonna Renaud. Renaud, add back the Joy Use from the Graveyard back into our hand. Joy Use can add another monster from the Graveyard back to our hand. Now making a Baron to floor Omni Negate on top of our Monster Negate. Double Negate. Return back in the deck with the Magus again to draw for free, which we shouldn't even have in the Graveyard, only because they declared an attack onto us. We are now using the big Welcome Labyrinth, which the Baron de Floor will negate, and then the Imperm will negate. The negate. Negate. We just lost both of our destruct. Both are gone. Wait, Gear Freed's back to the hand. I'll just re-summon it. Yeah. Take out the Baron de Floor so we could re-summon the Gear Freed. <laughs> just like that. Gear Freed is back. You can't escape me. Astolfo banishing for the next two turns. We're, oh, we're gonna suck up that lovely. Uh, you can't stop it. It's gonna become our equip card, and then you don't play another lovely. It's at the start of the damage step, so we don't continue the attack to attack for game. Joy use recycling the Magus. Ma, we still have a normal summon here. We're not gonna normal summon, okay? Imperm plus monster negate. The lady is being summoned. We're not using the gear free to negate. Uh, curious how we're just like not negating the lady summon. We're just letting it be. Let it be. We're gonna negate it. We keep on getting chain link blocked by the Torby. So I guess we're negating the ability of Torby being summoned. Imperm onto the Ariana to negate the search. Just like that. No Torp. So this worked out. Imperm and Gear Freed. Great. Now. The big welcome could not have chained to the Imperm to return back to Ariana since it was used to summon the Ariana. We would need a regular welcome into the big welcome to protect her. Gearfried has been putting in so much work today. That's, I think, like the best card of Infernoble. That's what it's looking like to me. The non-target suckage, the early monster negating. It's crazy. We are with the, and Magus just continually returning cards back in the deck and drawing. Is this the third time it's been activating? We've drawn three with the Magus. Send the equip cards. We return back in the deck. Summon the O gear from the deck with the ice sold. Send the Magus from the deck. Equip it onto the gear freed. We have an active monster negate ready again. If they were to have a Nibiru, we would be able to negate. Now, the Promethean Princess re reborns the Ricardetto. Ricardetto reborn a monster from the graveyard. We have 9,200 damage on the field. Now, the Big Welcome cannot spin any card on the field unless we have a level eight or higher fiend on the field. We just have the Ariana returning itself back in the hand to trigger the Torby, come forth and summon onto the field. Now, because the Immortal Phoenix negated the Torby summon, we can now safely summon our lady to block the Promethean Princess, to also block the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed, but to then still lose the duel through the Ricardetto in O Gear for game. Infernoble is the best deck with Maxi Band. Let's go. Maxi Band decayed meta weekly. This is something that I would maybe like to do once every maybe three to four months based off of the feedback support and all the good stuff that you want to say about this event. Hopefully Konami is paying attention to this. I know they're paying attention to my stuff because we get leaking, but maybe this will be a positive thing for Konami to see that people like this. The, the game's more interactive, maybe more diverse. Is that the case? I kind of see Snake Eyes uh, sneaking up towards the top here. Among the top 16, how many Snake Eyes in a maxi band meta? Whoop, six, still a lot. <laughs> okay, damn. 
Somehow, with Maxi Band, Labyrinth uh, became better because there's less Ash Blossom. So I say somehow, but we kind of know why. So Labyrinth became good, and without Maxi, Ash not being needed as much, Called by not needed as much, and also Cross Out Designate not needed as much. That's up to nine cards that everyone can make their decks a little bit different. I'm expecting the Snake Eye decklist to be a bit more different. Now, because these decklists don't apply to the regular meta, it's not going to influence the tier list. And I'm going to be really quick through the deck list because there's no Max C, but I believe a lot of these decks are still viable and just as good if you were to just add Max C into them. And when it comes to just learning the game and getting better, I think without Max C, it's actually more important for you to watch that than with Max C because there's only disruption. When to Valor, when to Impermanence, when to Nibiru, because there really isn't a when to Maxi. You just get that Maxi off early. There's some cases where they could Gamma and some other nonsense, but otherwise, it is much more important to learn the specific choke points of your interruption, which this tournament really hones in on when to use those cards. Now, let's get to the bottom real quick. We have Snake Eye, Scar, Black in the top 16, Triple in Permanence. We have some Sky Striker cards. We have room for that craziness. We just saw on Yu-Gi-Oh! Meta.com that a Sky Striker Snake Eyes deck topped a regional. So, uh, what the hell? Uh, wow. And we have FUGB18 with some Math Mac. Nothing too different or crazy here. Sorry that your Parallel Exceed has been semi-limited. Keck W. May back with anything interesting. We already know that the current Snake Eye players have room for uh, Cash Tiras. So, okay, you know, it looks like we have some more Ghost Bells in this deck. And then we have Icky. We got Monster Reborn room. Room for that. Room for Magician Souls. It's like the deck looks the same. <laughs> I can't even really find the difference here. Like, really? Uh, what were we uh, taking out from Maxi here? I guess we have room for Subversion. And then we have Lemon with some Labyrinth. 40 cards, no Max C, no Ash, no Called By. We got lots of room for text like Super Polymerization, the Solemn Judgment in pairs, plus the Strike. What else we have here? Darley with anything crazy. Nothing too crazy. The Snake Eyes decks all look the same. We have Hackbee with an interesting way to play Infernoble. Very well done. Good job to you. And then we have Duber with our Rika deck. The deck is severely hit in TCG because there's no Max C. And then we have Nonstop DC, Super Heavy Samurai doing quite well with the tech in Branded Fusion play. We then have Branded itself, where I still can't believe that TCG has three copies of Branded Fusion. Moving on, we have King. King with Lullaby of Obedience. Was this the correct play? Enemy controller was pretty cool. Use it with uh, being targeted by Valor or in permanence. We then have Rhino Masher. Rhino Masher, anything crazy. Maxing out that Nibiru. And then uh, Sekarin is with the Exorcister. Very happy to see this. Evenly match, putting a lot of good work. So good job to you. And then Chris with some Labyrinth Wham Bam. Thank you, Mams. Daruma put in a ton of work. And Alpha with more Labyrinth as it got second place. Not playing evenly matched. And then your winning deck, Infer Noble with Maxi Band. This was your best deck of the day. Well, technically, Snake Eyes was still the best deck, but it did not win, did not get top four. And that was nice to see. So very well done. Just like that. We are out.